Hey, welcome back everybody. Hopefully we're having a wonderful Friday out there. And if you have any cool weekend plans, definitely let me know in the comments. Luckily, things are calming down a little bit for some of us, but others, we do have a lot of rain on the way here over the next week or so. Uh, also, I am watching for a tornado potential this afternoon through portions of the south. And later on, probably about five or seven days from now, we're also looking at another pretty potent storm system that could potentially uh, bring back some severe weather chances through the Great Plains. So we're gonna break all that down for you in today's video. Also give you the latest on what's happening in the tropics? Do we have more storms to worry about uh, or are we going to be in a little bit of a lull? And I'll definitely uh, give you that information in the video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do so. Like the video if you like it. Comment, let me know where you're watching from. Uh, and um, yeah, I think with all that said, we can go ahead and jump on into it. So taking a look at satellite imagery currently uh, over the Atlantic Basin here, things have calmed down a little bit. Obviously, we had, um, uh, excuse me, I'm trying to remember uh, the name all of a sudden, which I'm completely blanking on. Let's see, we had uh, Debbie, Ernesto, what was after Ernesto? Oh no, I'm completely blanking on the name of the storm. Give me one second and I'll check right now. Uh, Francine, there we go. Sorry, it has been a very long week. Uh, if you couldn't tell, um, I had a test yesterday that kind of drained uh, all the energy out of me. So uh, anyway, Francine, we had Francine work on through the uh, Mississippi River Valley um, uh, throughout the past couple of days. Luckily, again, the main impacts from that are done with. Obviously, those coastal impacts are over. However, we will have an inland tornado and flooding threat this afternoon uh, as uh, Francine has kind of just stalled out and uh, just turned post-tropical here uh, over the past day or so. Now, outside of that, we do have another tropical system out into the Atlantic that we are watching, um, but uh, that one luckily uh, will likely not really harm anybody and probably not even get all that strong. The latest model guidance has really brought down the intensity value uh, for that tropical depression. We are watching an area off the southeast coastline, which uh, I will go ahead and circle that uh, kind of area that we're watching right into here. Uh, could see some tropical development, uh, which could potentially impact the weather over the southeast, but either way, whether that develops or not, I do think we'll see uh, some sort of tropical impacts out of it. Now, again, the latest map here from the National Hurricane Center, again, a post-tropical cyclone Francine, uh, which uh, there we go, got the name really down pat now, uh, kind of just parked over northern uh, Arkansas and kind of into the Ozarks. Uh, outside of that, this area over the Antilles has a 20% chance of developing really basically today or never. Um, so, you know, that one I'm not really super worried about. Again, we'll bring some showers and storms to you folks through the islands there, but uh, in terms of any severe weather seems uh, relatively unlikely. Behind that, we do have Tropical Depression 7 uh, with 35 mile an hour winds and 107 millibars is the reading on that, or hectopascals, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, and then we also have that area off the southeast coastline with only about a 30% chance of developing uh, over the next seven days. But again, whether that develops or not, the forecast is going to stay basically the same. Uh, and we'll take a look at that for sure uh, in a moment. All right, so just kind of taking a look, uh, we're going to actually back out here and take a look at this guy. So we're going to do things a little bit backwards-ish kind of today, not really, um, but we're going to start with this tropical depression and then we'll work into Francine uh, and that area off the southeast coastline and then transition into the longer range forecast across the country. So again, Tropical Depression 7 is still expected to become Tropical Storm Gordon sometime uh, today or tomorrow, but the latest forecast has really brought intensity down with this, uh, likely only peaking at around Tropical Storm strength before kind of dying out here over the Atlantic uh, due to some pretty rough dry air and wind shear that it is going to encounter. So uh, not much else to really say about this one. We take a look at the latest uh, spaghetti plots or uh, the ensembles from the European again. Uh, just not really expecting much development out of the storm system. Again, it is a tropical depression, so it has already developed, but in terms of strengthening, um, just, you know, it doesn't really look like a problem, and the track is also not a problem at all. So not really much else to say on that one, but it was uh, important enough, I figured, to mention. All right, other than that, let's go and dive into what's happening over the lower 48 because the rest of the tropical threats and uh, the storm threats are kind of centered over the country anyway or just offshore. So we can kind of just uh, dive into this map. Uh, water vapor loop here for the lower 48 and Canada as well, and I guess even portions of Mexico here. Uh, again, Francine here kind of spinning away over portions of Arkansas, uh, bringing a big, uh, big, excuse me, a big plume of moisture uh, through portions of the Ohio River Valley. Also, uh, it's kind of connected with a bit of a stationary front out here. So we have the uh, subtropical jet uh, that's kind of centered right here over the Gulf states. Uh, and then you'll notice, look at this moisture getting pulled back around that and into Francine. Uh, that has definitely led to um, some higher uh, precipitable water values over the region. And again, I think we're definitely going to have a very rainy period for the next couple of days at least. Uh, but we do have some dry air that's kind of funneling into the storm as well. So that'll help bring some breaks in the clouds. But unfortunately, that break in the clouds uh, could increase a tornado threat here through portions of Tennessee and Alabama, and even portions of Georgia uh, this afternoon. So we'll definitely want 
to watch out for that. Outside of that, we do have a trough kind of swinging on through the northern Rockies uh, that has led to some low pressure developing here and kind of pulling up into Canada. Brought some severe weather to Montana yesterday. Uh, so definitely had some very powerful storms out that way. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think we had many people chasing out there. Uh, at least I didn't see anything on my Twitter feed. So again, uh, maybe we did and I just didn't see it. But nonetheless, uh, we definitely had some strong storms up that way yesterday evening. Um, now, in terms of radar imagery, what does all this mean on the ground? Well, again, it is a very rainy Friday here through the southeast in the Ohio River Valley, even up to Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, back through uh, Missouri, and just kind of near the center of low pressure here from Francine, seeing plenty of showers, uh, but even heavier rainfall rates back here towards Georgia, the Florida Panhandle, uh, and also back towards eastern North Carolina through the Outer Banks, and even up through the Raleigh area, picking up on some pretty good rainfall this morning. Uh, we even have some showers here along the I-85 corridor. So, uh, again, Francine combined with an area of low pressure off the southeast coast, all connected with a stationary front with some cold air damming, even helping out here. Plenty of rainfall uh, is kind of going to be in the forecast for the next couple of days. And this area off the southeast coastline, uh, latest model guidance is kind of keeping it there a while. So we could see this uh, be a pattern for the foreseeable future of kind of dreary, cloudy, rainy days. Uh, although, again, I think we'll have some breaks. I don't think it'll be a washout for anybody, but uh, definitely going to be dodging some showers here for the future uh, and uh, definitely some cloud cover as well. Now, outside of that, we do have a couple of showers up here into the Dakotas. This is actually due to that trough I mentioned back here towards uh, Montana. It even looks like some mountain snow falling out into Montana right now, so uh, definitely interesting stuff there. But nonetheless, again, a little, little bit of uh, more active weather that way due to that trough that I mentioned. All right, watches, warnings, and advisors will start in the southeast because, again, kind of the bullseye for active weather today. Plenty of flash flood, or these might just be flood watches. Yeah, these are just flood watches uh, out for, again, much of Alabama from Birmingham to Montgomery, even through western Georgia and up into uh, kind of west central Tennessee there, just west of Nashville. Uh, again, a lot of flooding uh, could be a concern here due to all of that heavy rainfall. And when we take a look at the latest model guidance here in a second, you'll see just how much rain we may need to worry about. Uh, also, flood watch down near the Jacksonville area where we already have a little bit of flooding and uh, funnily enough heat advisories to the south of there down towards Miami uh, where again it's going to be a pretty hot day where we're not really under the influence of uh, that uh, stationary front as it is pulled northward. Now back through the Carolinas, a couple flood advisories already through North Carolina today. Again, we looked at that big blob of precipitation back that way, uh, again, leading to some flooding concerns for sure. Um, so, you know, definitely want to watch out for that as well. So again, uh, flooding going to be the main threat over the southeast today, uh, but again, also a tornado threat, which we will look at. Out west, uh, things are pretty quiet. A couple of winter weather advisories up into the higher terrains of Montana here, again, due to a little bit of mountain snow falling. Also, these might be, let's see, uh, yeah, freeze warnings in effect here for the higher terrains of Oregon. Uh, we have some air quality alerts down here through portions of the LA and San Diego metro. Uh, same story for Dallas and Houston having some air quality alerts. So all things considered, again, pretty quiet map that we're looking at here. Uh, but I do think things will pick up this afternoon. Again, a small tornado threat here through northern Alabama, uh, even central Alabama, through western Georgia and southern Tennessee, specifically south central Tennessee. Uh, again, could see an isolated tornado or two this afternoon. Francine still uh, giving enough of that uh, wind shear there to kind of tap into a little bit of that instability uh, that the dry air is going to present. Uh, and again, could see a couple spin-up tornadoes. Now, these tornadoes might be tough to see on radar. It's still a tropical low in nature, even if it is post-tropical. Uh, so these are not going to be the big kind of supercells that you normally see out west. These, again, are very low-topped. Uh, a lot of times, these tornadoes kind of hide under the radar's ability uh, to find them. So uh, definitely just know that uh, that is a possibility this afternoon. Also, flooding. Uh, still running a moderate risk of flash flooding here just north of the Birmingham metro up to Huntsville uh, there into that region and just really much of Alabama in general could see some flooding today. Uh, also not under the risk uh, really all that much but back towards portions of eastern North Carolina watch out. Uh, again we already have seen some flood advisories this morning and as that heavy rain continues could see some flooding that way uh, but again really anyone in the southeast is under the threat for the possibility at least of some flooding this afternoon and we'll do it all again tomorrow especially over uh, Alabama, Georgia and Western Tennessee once again, uh, and even Northeastern Mississippi there, uh, where again, we'll take a look at the model here next, but uh, could really see rounds of heavy rain for a couple of days in a row here. All right, so speaking of that latest model guidance, this is kind of what we're seeing this afternoon currently. Uh, again, widespread scattered showers and storms through much of the Southeast. We move this ahead into time 
Uh, and again, uh, we need to watch out for that tornado threat that could become uh, a concern this afternoon and evening. Really, any of these cells right into this region that I have circled uh, are going to have the potential to try to turn tornadic as, again, there's enough wind shear and instability to kind of tap into uh, that, uh, again, a tornado threat could be a concern. Again, if you're in that portion of Alabama, western Georgia, uh, we'll say northeastern Tennessee and western uh, and southern excuse me, not northeastern Tennessee, excuse me, northeastern Mississippi, uh, and then western and central Tennessee. So again, in that region, any of these storms have the potential to become tornadic. Elsewhere, again, still some showers and storms uh, through the Carolinas and back through the Florida uh, Peninsula as well this afternoon, uh, and even up through the Ohio River Valley could see some showers and storms, just less likely to be severe. Uh, and that continues through the overnight. We get through tonight, and you'll notice it's still raining pretty good back towards Alabama, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, and kind of what's happening here, just to give you the meteorological breakdown, you're probably wondering, well, uh, right here through the Carolinas, it's not raining, but it's raining towards uh, the west there and towards the east here. Uh, you know, why is that? Well, basically, notice how the isobars here kind of ridge down into the Carolinas. This is a pretty good cold air damming signature. And oftentimes what happens is where this damming meets uh, this tropical moisture or kind of this warm front that we're seeing, which is kind of placed uh, somewhere into here, uh, is where we get that precipitation to kind of grow. So in the Carolinas, we got dry air at the surface, relatively speaking. Uh, and again, it's still going to be cloudy, definitely for sure. Uh, but we have less of clashing air masses here compared to Alabama and Georgia, where we're just getting rounds of uh, this wind that's just kind of following along the stationary front uh, and overriding some of that cold air. Uh, and then we're getting that precipitation to form. So cold air damming helping us out in the Carolinas, and I think it's going to help us again tomorrow afternoon. I know we got some football games. I know college game day is going to be in Columbia, South Carolina tomorrow. Forecast has gotten much better for that. Uh, again, you'll notice you're kind of in this Goldilocks zone of sorts. It's raining pretty good. Oops, sorry, just smacked the microphone. Uh, it's raining pretty good out towards the west, towards Alabama, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, and it's raining pretty good to the east over the Atlantic um, uh, kind of seaboard here through the Outer Banks, but through the central Carolinas, again, cold air damming helping us out uh, and preventing some of that moisture from kind of breaking into it. Now, it is possible Saturday afternoon that that damming breaks down a little bit here. Uh, and I do think we'll see some scattered showers and storms Saturday afternoon and evening, uh, again, through the Carolinas. But again, the bigger threat I think will be, uh, excuse me, the bigger risk area rather for heavy rainfall and flooding will be back towards Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Mississippi. But again, still going to see showers and storms through the Carolinas. Carolinas, I think just less so than maybe we thought a couple days ago, uh, and uh, definitely less so than our folks back towards Alabama. Uh, again, we're moving this ahead. This is overnight Saturday into Sunday. It is still raining back towards Birmingham, Huntsville, northern Mississippi, so definitely concerned about that flooding threat. Uh, and again, if we just take a look at rainfall totals over uh, this weekend, so this is just now through Monday morning, look at some of these totals. Um, we could see half a foot of rain in portions of northern Alabama and central Alabama. That's definitely going to lead to a flood threat. That's why we have that flood watch in effect. And again, just to you know, remind you, this even stretches down towards south central Georgia uh, and up into portions of Tennessee. Uh, again, the Carolinas here, South Carolina specifically, uh, notice we're going to see some rain definitely, I think, through the Midlands. Uh, and even the upstate, but uh, things have definitely shifted in the thinking here. Again, a couple days ago, we thought maybe Western South Carolina and Western North Carolina could really pick up on some heavy rainfall, uh, but that cold air damming has become a little bit stronger than expected. So again, that rain has shifted off to the South and East with it. Uh, but again, still some showers over the Carolinas, just less so uh, than our friends to the West. And if we take a look at the Ohio River Valley, uh, Kentucky going to see some rain, uh, Cape Girardeau probably, Paducah, that area could see some pretty good rainfall out of this, a good couple of inches through the weekend. Uh, and again, even portions uh, there just to the west of Nashville and east of Memphis, that kind of corridor could see some pretty good rainfall as well. So uh, definitely going to see some impressive rain, I think, uh, for some folks over that part of the country here uh, through the weekend. Now, zooming things out a little bit, what is it going to be for the rest of us? Well, this afternoon, outside of all that rain that we just talked about from Francine and that coastal low, um, things are relatively quiet. I mean, uh, the Northeast is beautiful. Again, a couple showers working through the Dakotas and Minnesota, I think even Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, but uh, the Northeast having some great weather, Michigan, Ohio, uh, back towards the uh, Southern Plains looks like a really nice day. And this is Saturday afternoon now. Again, another nice day, just some scattered showers, potentially up through the Northern Plains. Uh, and also through the Southern Plains, potentially maybe, uh, well, not really the Southern Plains, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, just know though, again, through this week, outside of the Southeast where we're seeing that active weather, uh, things are relatively quiet. 
Now we'll take a look at the West Coast as well. Again, uh, things relatively quiet here as well. That trough lifting northward, uh, so not as uh, as big of an impact on the weather as we had just a while ago. Um, but we get through this afternoon, we could see some scattered showers uh, and uh, or just some scattered showers really uh, through the Pacific Northwest. Definitely going to be a possibility for sure. Uh, and then we get through overnight tonight. And I want you to kind of note here at the very bottom of your screen. I know not a lot of people are probably talking about this, but we do have a tropical system in the Pacific uh, that is going to try to make land fall up into Mexico and some of this moisture could get pulled uh, north and um, far enough east that maybe portions of the Rio Grande could see some rainfall out of that. You notice here's Saturday afternoon, uh, that moisture again lifting here through portions of the Texas Panhandle uh, down through uh, New Mexico and even uh, West Texas there through the West Texas Panhandle kind of. Uh, and uh, again, just wanted to note that again, there is a bit of a tropical system down there. Some of that monsoonal moisture could flow far enough inland uh, that we uh, could see some rainfall out of it down that way. Also some mountain rain and mountain snow up through the Pacific Northwest through the weekend. Uh, but back through California and through much of the plains, a pretty nice weekend overall. All right, so let's bring the forecast out a little bit here through the next couple of days and through the next week, really. We'll go ahead and start on, actually, let's bring this all the way into Sunday afternoon, kind of where we picked up uh, or left off here. So uh, at this point, the main driving features for our weather is, one, this big-time ridge over the east, uh, a big-time trough digging down into the west by the time we get to the end of this weekend, and then whatever is left of Francine uh, and this kind of a stalled-out boundary here through the southeast. So those are the three big playmakers on the field really for the foreseeable future. You'll notice through this week ahead, early next week, that big trough out west dumps through and eventually, I think, could lead to some severe weather through the Great Plains. At the same time, uh, we still have these lower heights over the southeast as that stationary front continues to linger uh, and then still dealing with that big ridge up into the northeast that has kept things relatively, or not relatively, just really um, quite nice. Uh, now we move this further ahead into time, and um, it's more of the same through next week. By the time we get into next Friday, again, a week from now, still more troughs dumping out west. These, again, uh, here's one, here's another. These could bring severe weather to the uh, Great Plains. Still seeing uh, lower heights here back towards the southeast coastline as uh, that stationary front stays stalled out and tropical development or subtropical development of sorts uh, could continue to linger and pose a rainfall risk and uh, just kind of cloud cover and cooler temperatures in general and then still staying warm up in the northeast. So uh, over the next week, I don't think much is really going to change in the weather. I think we're going to be dealing with a lot of the same uh, and what this could look like on radar. But we move this ahead, we'll start. Uh, we'll start on uh, excuse me <clears throat> Sunday afternoon here. Uh, again, seeing all this rain in the southeast due to that start off frontal boundary. Again, the Mid Atlantic should stay relatively dry. The Northeast should stay dry. But wherever this kind of warm front uh, clashes with this cold air damming, is where we're going to see that pretty heavy rainfall. So again, kind of seeing where that sets up here on the map. Uh, at least on the European model. At the same time, again, another storm system out west uh, dips through. And by the time we get into later next week, uh, notice these storm chances really increasing through the Great Plains. Uh, again, I think this could bring severe weather. At the same time, that low pressure out over the uh, southeast coastline tries to become a little bit more defined, uh, tries to ride up the coast a little bit, and could eventually work inland at some point next week uh, and bring some rainfall. Uh, again, it's kind of just, it's tough to know at this point wh what exactly that'll do. Just know it's kind of lingering and stalled out for at least the next week. So I think that'll be a pretty big impact on the weather. Um, now, uh, talking about the severe weather risk, just a little bit here, supercell composite, again, just the ingredients for stronger storms. Notice definitely upticking next week. This is Monday evening. Uh, the Great Plains see an uptick in that. We get into uh, Tuesday and Wednesday and notice a pretty significant uptick through portions of Nebraska, Kansas, uh, down through Texas. Uh, and then just that kind of continues next week as these storm systems shoot out of the Rockies and then kind of fly up into Canada, kind of the tail end of that could bring some severe weather uh, down through that portion of the country. Uh, and then final thing we'll talk about here are temperatures. The southeast, again, going to stay cool over the next week just due to this cloud cover and rainfall. Uh, the northeast, the Midwest, the Great Lakes region, the plains, it's going to stay hot due to that ridge uh, in place. And then out west, it'll stay pretty cool as those troughs kind of dump on through. And moving this all the way through next week, you'll notice just that general idea continues uh, of most of the country being warm east of the Rockies, except for the southeast, uh, and then the Rockies and the west coast themselves staying pretty cool as well. So uh, that's the latest for you here. That's all I got for you. Again, kind of running a little bit uh, slower here than we were a couple of days ago, which is probably a good thing. I'm sure uh, many of you don't want to have to deal with anything crazy, and I could definitely uh, use a break from talking about a whole bunch of things as well anyway. So uh, with that said, though, y'all have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Enjoy it, and I'll see you all tomorrow.